tonight on our Wednesday night service. Before we get started, let's pray. Lord Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for your word, Lord. We thank you for your presence, Lord. We thank you, Lord God, for the earth and vessels that have come to your house tonight, Lord God, to hear the word, Lord. Lord God, I, I plead the blood over each and each person here, Lord, and the one watching, watching by the internet, Lord, whether it be YouTube or Facebook, Lord. And we come against every demonic hindrance right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And we thank you, Lord God, for everything that you're going to expound to us tonight, Lord. And we give you all the honor and all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Everybody had a good week so far? God's been dealing with me about something here lately in about the past two days. And... You know, the Bible says you have no need to be taught by a man, but the anointing will teach you all things. When Jesus told the woman at the well, he said that the Lord, that God seeketh for true worshipers to worship him in spirit and in truth. And here lately, he's been dealing with me about that. And he's been teaching me how to worship and how to enter into worship. And what takes place when you're in the spirit of God. When you enter in by worship. So we're going to start off. We're going to start off in Luke. Or excuse me. Yeah, Luke. I'm sorry. Luke chapter, tw chapter 24. Luke chapter 24 and verse. We're going to start with verse 49. Luke chapter 24. Start with verse 49. You know, that's like even the word says that where the presence of the Lord is, there's liberty, there's freedom. Even, even as individuals in our own prayer closets, entering into the presence of God, there's deliverance for us. From the things that weigh us down from just everyday life, everybody experiences it. The disciples experienced it too. Jesus even experienced it. We're going to talk about that tonight too, and what he did about it. He, he wouldn't talk to the Father in the <coughs> So Luke chapter 24 and verse 49. And he starts, he said, this is Christ. He's talking and he says, And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry, that word tarry right there means to delay or to stay. But tarry, you in the city of Jerusalem. He's telling them, stay in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. Verse 50. And he led them out as far as to Bethany, and he lifted up his hands and blessed them. And it came to pass, while he blessed them, he was parted from them and carried up into heaven. 52. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple, praising and blessing God. Amen. That stuck to me right there when I read that. Now, if you go read John's account, if you go read Matthew and Mark, they don't record what Luke records here. But Luke also records the same the same thing in Acts. If you go, you know, we're going we're gonna to go to Acts here in just a minute. But he specifically says, and they worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple, praising and blessing God. Amen. So, they didn't just go back to Jerusalem and just sit on their hands and their thumbs. The Bible says that they were continually praising and blessing God. The Lord's been dealing with me about Paul tells us to pray without ceasing. He tells us that for a reason. Yep. When they went when they went back to the when they went back to root to Jerusalem, they entered into a state of worship. And it was continuous. It was every morning, every midday, all evening, all night. It was all the time. The Lord's been dealing with me about us. It's time for us to get into that state of worship to where it's all day, it's all night, it's continuous. Because what's going to take place, just like with them, they, they receive power from on high. That state of worship 
when you get into that state of worship. You know, I've heard Pastor Keith say this. you got to press to get in. You press to get in. And that's something else the Lord's been dealing with me about. They went back to Jerusalem. He told them to wait for 10 days. One day goes by, nothing takes place. Two days go by, nothing takes place. A week goes by, nothing takes place. But they didn't stop. They pressed. And they continued to press. And he's been dealing with me about this is we have to press. And when we get, when we get into the Holy of Holies, thank God for Jesus that we ain't got to do that other stuff they had to do back in the day. We just go straight to the Father through Christ. Thank God for that. And what a privilege we have today that we can all go home and get in our prayer closets and just talk to Jesus and talk to the Father. And he's making intercession for us. And we can enter into that state of worship. And we can literally go into the throne room by the power of the Holy Ghost, by through the Spirit. Yeah. And see, here's the thing. The Spirit hadn't been poured out yet. But they pressed. And they pressed until something took place. I know y'all heard this before. Pray without ceasing. Excuse me. That's what Paul says. Pray. That's right. Pray without ceasing. But there was some people that was making some hats one time. Do you remember what the... Push, it said, yeah, push, P-U-S-H. And it said, pray until something happens is what mm -hmm. it stood for. Well, that's what they did. They prayed until something happened. But they knew that God, they knew that he said it was a promise that he would send the Holy Ghost. And they waited. I feel like we're in a season right now. I feel like we're all in a season, in individuals and in the body of Christ here. In this season that we're in, it's time to press and it's time to push. It's time to enter into a state of worship on the job site. Everywhere you go, be in a state of praise. Everywhere we go. Now, if you go to, let's go to uh, Acts. Go to Acts 1. Acts chapter 1. Let's see, 12. Yes, Acts chapter 1. We're going to start with verse 12. Acts chapter 1, start with verse 12. Same thing. Luke, Luke, is the, Luke is the author of Acts. And he writes, he records this in verse 12. Then returned they unto Jerusalem from the Mount called Olivet. Okay, if you want to know where Jesus ascended to heaven, there you go. He ascended, he was, they was on the Mount, they was on Mount Olivet when the ascension took place. So if you ever want to know that, I actually found that out today. I did not know that. And when I read that, because I've always wondered, because if you go read Luke's account in his gospel, if you see right here in verse 12, it says, they returned, then they returned unto Jerusalem from the Mount Olivet, which is from Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey. It's the same thing that he records in his gospel. It was a Sabbath day journey from where they was back to Jerusalem. So that's where they was at when his ascension took place. Just a fun fact, if you just want to know that, I thought that was pretty cool. Verse 13, and when they were come in, they went up into an upper room where abode both Peter, James, John, Andrew, Philip, and Thomas, Bartholomew, Matthew, James, the son of Alphaeus, Simon the Zealotes, and Judas, the brother of James. These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and with Mary, the mother of Jesus, and his brethren, James and Judas, and the rest of Jesus' brethren that Mary and Joseph had while, before Joseph passed away. That right there struck me as well. They all continued with one accord, with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women. I know some church, church traditions, they say, you know, what well, the women should keep quiet in the church. Well, they need to go back and read 1 Corinthians chapter 7. They need to start at chapter 7. And, and they need to see what it really says about that. But the point is this. Everybody had come back and was in one mind, one accord, because there was a goal in mind. And that goal was for the promise to come. And when that promise came, the book of Acts took place. It's called the Acts of the Apostles. I think they should have called it the Acts of the Holy Ghost. That's what it ought to be called, because that's what was taking place. 
Acts of what? Acts of the Holy Ghost. The actions of the Holy Spirit. Oh, okay. And you know, I was listening to, I was listening to a, a man preach the other day, and he said something, and I don't remember what his name was. I'm going to be honest with you, I don't remember what his name was, but this is what he said. Worship is our weapon. It's a weapon. Yeah. It's a yeah. weapon. Yeah. And I've noticed this. That's true. Yeah. It is a weapon. Look here. Everybody in this room right now, y'all got problems. Y'all got individual problems. So do I. Every last one of us. Everybody by the way of the internet, y'all got problems. But when we get into that secret place with the Lord, if you don't know what that secret place is, Jesus says, go into your closet and what your father sees you do in secret, he will reward you openly. Mm -hmm. He sees the prayer. He sees your prayer. And that reward, that openly, that ro that reward that's openly is spiritual. That's spiritual rewards. The understanding and the wisdom of the knowledge of his word to not only minister to people, but also know how to enter into that prayer closet. And once we get in that prayer closet, what, what do we do? We enter with thanksgiving in our hearts and we enter his courts with praise. And that's what they was doing. Even though they didn't see nothing take place right off the bat, they still pressed. And I've noticed once we get into that, I've noticed once I get into, once I get into that place, everything else it just melts away. Mm -hmm. All the worries, all the ang ang anxieties, everything that you got going on, everything that you got going on with your kids or your family or things at work, it just melts away. That's what me and Sister Becky were sitting here talking about before we ever started this call, before we ever started the night. I'm gonna read. Let's go to Hebrews, Hebrews 13, 15, if you want to. You don't have to if you don't want to. I'm just going to run over there real quick. I want to read what Paul writes. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 15. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 15. Hey, right there, just the first one, it literally starts off, let brotherly love continue. You can't have brotherly love if you ain't in the presence of God. I'm just going to be honest with you. You got to be in his presence all the time because you get out here in the public and you'll lose it real quick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just be honest about it. Let's just be honest. You'll lose it real fast if you ain't walking in the spirit of the living God. <laughs> Chapter 13, verse 15. Listen to what Paul says right here. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. Amen. Did you notice how he, how he worded that? He worded it. Why would he word it like that? Why would he say, let us offer the sacrifice of praise? Why would he say sacrifice? Well, about, let's think about this. In the old covenant, they had to sacrifice bullocks and rams and goats and whatnot. And to be, and hey, let's just be honest. Think about this for a second. Me and, me and Brother Bone was talking about this. Think about all the people that brought all these sacrifices. It was a modern day butcher. Mm -hmm. They was covered with blood all the time. Absolutely. All the time. Hey, it was work, y'all. Yes. Can you just imagine the priest going, oh, goodness gracious, it's that time of year again. <laughs> they couldn't start bringing them in. It's like them deer hunters when they take them to the processors. I mean, you think about it. It was work. Listen to what, what Paul says right here. He said, it's a sacrifice of praise. Let's just be honest. You don't always want to go into that place and praise God. You don't. That's why it's a sacrifice of praise. It's a sacrifice to the Lord. You might have something else you want to do. I have things that I want to do all the time too, and I have to realize I need to go before my father, and I need to I need to make a sacrifice before him and get on my knees and humble myself before him. Mm. And that's why he tells us that. It's a sacrifice of praise. Now look what he says in 16. But to do, but to do good and to communicate, forget not. For with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. He literally says, and to communicate, forget not. We don't need to stop talking to Jesus. We need to talk to Jesus continuously. I know Blake and they probably think I'm crazy half the time at work because I uh, half the time I'm over there. If I if I'm if I'm not talking, if I'm, I'm praying in the Holy Ghost under my breath, or if I'm not doing that, I'm usually just talking to the Lord. You can talk to the Lord 
You can talk to him anytime you want to. That's right. That's right. And that's the great thing about it. He tells us right there. But to do good and to communicate, forget not. Don't forget to communicate. So communicate. For with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. <laughs> that just struck me right there. You know that song we sing, we bring the sacrifice of praise mm -hmm. into the house of the Lord. Think about it. Half the time, sometimes, not all the time maybe, but there's a lot of times you don't want to get up. And when you do get up, there's things that hinder you when you get up. And it does everything. The devil does everything you do so you don't come to church. And it's like a, it's just like dragging a ball and chain on the whole time coming here. But when you get here, we praise the Lord. That's a sacrifice of praise. But it don't need to, need to just take place on Sunday morning. Because here's the thing. When it starts taking place at your house on a regular basis, the book of Acts takes place. Amen. And it's taking place right now. In, right. in the world. And in this country. It's happening. You know, that's something else the Lord showed me, was dealing with me about Asbury. You look at Asbury, what were they doing? Praising. They were praising they were in a state of worship, and they had found something that they ain't never experienced before. They had entered into a into a continual state of worship, and they felt the love of God. That's what we just talked about. They felt His peace. He is the Prince of Peace. I don't know if any. I I, I I'm gonna say this. I have felt God's peace, the supernatural peace of God, before in my life, and I don't know. I can't explain it to you. The Bible says it surpasses all of our understanding. Mm -hmm. They, they was in a supernatural peace in that place. And a lot of people say, well, that's not a real revival. They weren't in there praying in the Holy Ghost. That ain't got nothing to do with it. They was doing just what they did. That's right. Worship. Mm -hmm. They were doing just what the apostles did. They, they was tearing and they were staying. They was in a state of praise continually. It's very important. Now, we don't forget every day to talk to our Father in heaven. You know, you think about it like this. When you was when you was young and growing up, and something took place, you wanted to talk to somebody about something. If it wasn't your dad, it was your mom. It was somebody, somebody that was older than you. Think about it like that. I look at it like this. This might help some people. It might not. But I look at it like this. I love my mother, and I love my dad. But they can't do nothing for me like God can. Amen. You see. Jesus says you even have to forsake all. It doesn't mean that I don't love her. It doesn't mean we don't love our families. But he wants you. He wants me. He wants all of you. Yes. He wants all of us to come talk to him That's right. about everything. I talk to him about everything. I do too. I, do. I talk to him about everything. We, we have to. I'm going to be honest with you. And, and I told Mother this the other night. And hey, we talk about things, but I talk about everything with my father in heaven. Because he's the one who's got the answers. Nobody else has the answers but him. That's right. I want to read to y'all <coughs> Isaiah. I got 63, but I know that's not right. It's Isaiah 96. I got a lot of scriptures, I'm going to be honest with you. Y'all going to be flipping pretty, pretty good. Isaiah 9 and 6. Y'all probably get there before I do. 9 and 6. 9 and 6 or 96? Yeah, Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. Okay. Chapter 9, verse 6. I read this today. And there's just something, there's just something about it. Y'all there? Yeah, man. Almost. It says, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, one name, Counselor, other name, the Mighty God. The everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. That's Christ. Amen. You notice it said a, show, a son shall be given, but he also his, he is also the everlasting Father because you can't separate Jesus and the Father. They're one. 
Jesus told Jesus told the disciples, He said, You've seen me, you've seen the Father. Amen. And and the, the, that the last one, the Prince of Peace. Amen. If anybody is going, if you're going through, if you have if you got strife in your life and you got turmoil in your life, I can promise you the world has no answer for you. But Jesus Christ is your answer. I know that I done had plenty of it, and they were nothing in this world that could help me other than Jesus. Amen. 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 That's right. That's He's the only one. The Prince of Peace is the only one. Lawyers can't help you. Jesus even says, Lord, to them that impute burdens on men that them themselves they can't even carry. Judges can't help you. Don't seek counsel from the ungodly. That's right. Don't ever seek counsel. I've done, done plenty of that. I can tell you, I won't do that no more. <laughs> Don't seek counsel. Oh, my goodness. Nope. Y'all, if y'all watching them, them them daytime television shows, y'all don't don't be taking no advice from them. We're gonna let y'all know. <laughs> go to Isaiah. Since we're in Isaiah, let's go to Isaiah chapter six, verse three. Six to three. I know we're we're we're, we're moving around a lot tonight. Oh my goodness, this one right here. <laughs> Have you ever thought about, before I read the scripture, I was thinking about this today. Have you ever thought about when God created Adam and then he created Eve out of Adam? And the Bible says specifically that they walk with God in the cool of the day. They commune with him. Can you imagine that? I mean, have you ever just really thought about that? Can you imagine? And here's the thing that you gotta see, you gotta understand this. They weren't wrapped in flesh, not yet. Because they had committed no sin. They were they were perfect beings. They weren't wrapped in flesh yet. The skins hadn't been made for them yet, as the word says. But they walk with God and they commune with Him. And I don't I, I don't know, I just that just strikes me. I can't I can't comprehend it. I don't think none of us could really comprehend it in the fleshly state that we're in. But when I read when I read Isaiah six and verse three, now watch this. Watch what it says. Now this is this is Isaiah, and he's talking about the seraphims that he saw. If you start with verse two, it says, "Above it stood the seraphims, and each one had six wings. With twain, that means two. With two he covered his face, and with two he covered his feet, and with two he did fly. And one cried unto another. Now this is what he said, and said, "Holy, holy, holy, is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth." is full of his glory. And the post of the door, well, we won't go on, we won't go on into it because that, that gives us some deep subjects right there. But I wanted y'all to specifically see they cried to one another. They looked at one another and said, holy, holy, holy. If you go to Revelation, it says they cry, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who, who was and is and is to come. Can you imagine that? And look here, it says that they fly around continuously and their eyes full within and without. They fly around the throne and every time they go around, they see something they've never seen before and they've been doing it since the beginning. Can you imagine that? It's hard to imagine, ain't it? Wow. So here's the thing. He is worthy to be praised. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. He's worthy to be praised. Yes. It don't yes. matter what's going on in this world right now. We see prophecy taking place right now. Mm -hmm. But hey, he's worthy to be praised during all of it. Because one day, brother, we're gonna see we're gonna get we're gonna get to see these things firsthand. If you go to Revelation, since we're on the subject, let's go to Revelation 4. You know that, that song, I don't know if Hillsong sings it, but one of them sings it says, it's so will I. It says, if the stars were made to worship, so will I. And that made that even the angelic host of heaven, they worship him. Some of, some of them got sidetracked, but Revelation 4. Holy is the Lord of hosts. Amen. The whole earth is full of his glory. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> hey, just bring it up here. <laughs> we'll just let it play. Amen. Hey, that, hey was, is that an iPhone, Sister Lee? Yes, I was at the Bible. Amen. Said, Even the iPhone that got the Holy Ghost tonight. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Apple. Lord, let your spirit fall on the company of Apple. That's right. In Jesus' name. Amen. Revelation 4 and verse 8. And 
four beasts had each of them six wings about him, and they were full of eyes within, and they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. And when the beasts give glory and honor and thanks to him, that and when the beasts give glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne, who liveth forever and ever and ever. Ain't that amazing? Jesus just he was just called the everlasting father in Isaiah. And they and they give thanks. And that right there struck me right here where it says, and they rest not day and night. And, and we and it's hard for us to fathom this. They don't rest because I feel like it's a they see something new every single time. You know, even Paul says that he framed the worlds by the by his word. That's plural. That's not singular. He framed the worlds. It's just sometimes it's just. I want it, but I want us to understand tonight that when we get, we need to get in a state of worship like we like we've never been in before. Because these people are gonna come in here, and I'm just gonna be honest with you. I'm just gonna say it. Two, three songs, and then we just start preaching. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't feel like that's worship, y'all. We need to get in a state of worship. Yeah. Where it gets thick in here. Amen. Thick, yeah. thick. Well, there ain't no time clock. You know, he told them to tarry 10 days. You know, sometimes I feel like he told them to tarry 10 days to see if they was actually going to do it or not. <laughs> see if they was actually going to, see if they was actually going to, going to go back and just and seek him and inquire of the Lord and just keep on and keep on and push and pray and press and all day and all night until something took place. Right. That's what we got to get. And don't get me wrong, there ain't nothing wrong with coming in here and singing two or three songs. There ain't nothing wrong with that. But I'm going to be honest with y'all. I don't know if y'all go home and put on praise and worship music, but I go home and put on praise and worship music, and I don't experience some things I ain't never felt before in no church. Amen. I'm just going to be honest with you. And look here, this is where it needs to take place. Yeah. And when people come in here, they need to feel that presence. They need mm. to feel something they ain't yes. never felt before. I ain't to feel the love of God when they come into this place. But he's looking for the ones that's going to worship him in spirit and in truth. You know, that's like when Jesus told Nicodemus, he said, you, the only way to enter is by the water and the spirit. And I got to thinking about that, to worship him in spirit. Well, first of all, if you're going to worship him in spirit, you got to get in the spirit. <laughs> and you got to press to get in the spirit. Used to, i go in my prayer closet, you know, and i pray, you know, 10, 15 minutes, and I'd sit there, and I'd, I'd do like this. I'd go. About 30 seconds goes by, I ain't heard nothing. I was like, well, I'll come back again tomorrow night. No, that's, that's not pressing. That's not what that is. I was trying to rush out too fast. And then the Lord taught me, once I got into that place, not to rush out so fast, Absolutely. but to stay there. Absolutely. Deliverance takes place in the presence of God. People get set free in the presence of God. Worries and cares, they get melted away just like the hills. The Bible says that the mountains will melt before his presence. All of our worries and our cares and our fears and all these things, they melt in the presence of God. They go away. And I want to talk about Dan, oh, excuse me, I want to talk about David. Now, everybody knows that David danced before the Lord. Amen. Let's go to Psalms 30. Psalms 30. David praises God for his deliverance. Can I ask a question? Anybody here ever been delivered? Amen. I've been delivered. I'm going to be honest with you. I've been delivered from demonic oppression. Mm -hmm. I've been delivered from all kinds of things of this world. Oh, yeah. And I praise God for it. Yes. Hey, there ain't nothing wrong with showing you scars. Mm -hmm. There ain't nothing wrong with that. David's fitting to tell he's fitting to show one of his scars. He's going to talk about his deliverance, that God delivered him out of the hands of his enemies. Look how he starts it off. 30 and verse 1. He says, I will extol thee, O Lord, for thou hast lifted me up and hast, and hast not made my foes to rejoice over me. O Lord my God, I cried unto thee, and thou hast healed me. O Lord, thou hast brought up my soul from a grave and hast kept me alive that I should not go down into the pit. Thank you, Lord, for Jesus Christ. I don't have to go to hell because of what he did for me. That's right. That right there in itself is, 
We could just get up in this altar and just stay as long and just, you know, that right there, that's worthy for that. He's worthy for that. Amen. And look what he says over here in 9 and verse 1. Psalms 9 and verse 1. Psalms 9 and verse 1, he says, I will praise thee, O Lord, with my whole heart. I will show forth all thy marvelous works. He says, I will praise thee with thy whole heart. I feel like that's, you know, the spirit wasn't poured out in, in David's day, but the spirit was still here. He was there. The spirit was there from the beginning, as Genesis said, and the spirit will hover above the face of the waters. So here's the thing. David, listen to what he says right here. I will praise thee, O Lord, with my whole heart. The Lord gave David revelation, and even in the old covenant. David says, the Lord said to my Lord, sit thou on my right hand till I make thy enemies, thy footstools. He says, the Lord said to my Lord. The Holy Ghost told him about Jesus. To sit thou on my right hand till I make thy enemies thy footstool. David knew the truth. He was in spirit, and he said, I will praise thee, O Lord, with my whole heart and truth. Remember, he told Nicodemus, or he told the woman at the well, it's spirit and in truth. This is what it is, rightly, the word, uh, uh, rightly dividing the word of truth, a workman worthy of his meat, started to show thyself approved unto who? Unto God. So when we do that, he, he expounds the truth to us. So that when we go into that secret place with him, we're not just in there babbling, we're actually the spirit. What he hears from the Father, he's showing us which is the truth, and we're worshiping him in the spirit and in the truth, which is him. We're in him. It is a place. It's not just a name. Yeah. In spirit and in truth is a place. That's why Jesus says, seek me with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. Because you have to get into a place with him. Oh, yes. It's a place. Okay. 2 Samuel 22 in verse 1. I told y'all we're going to go through a lot of scriptures. I'm going to be honest with y'all. probably going to go through the whole Bible tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to let him read. Yeah. 2 Samuel 22 in verse 1. I got to get over here too. 2 Samuel. Okay. Did y'all get it there for I did? Amen. Amen. Might have to let you read it. Here we go. 2 Samuel 1, brother? Yes, sir. 22 and verse 1. <clears throat> Psalm of Thanksgiving. 22 and verse 1. And David spake unto the Lord the words of this song in the day that the Lord hath delivered him out of the hand of all his enemies and out of the hand of Saul. And he said, the Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. Amen. If we don't say nothing else when we go into that secret place, we can say that right there over and over because it's the truth. Every time you say it, it gets true. It's, 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 it just, it radiates truth coming off of it because he is our rock. He is our deliverer. Now we was talking, we was talking today and one thing we got to talking about is Islam and Christianity. And we started having a conversation about it. You know, the Muslims, they believe in Allah. And they say he is the one true God. Christians believe in the one true God, Jehovah. Or as the or as the Hebrews used to call it, Adonai. Mm -hmm. Alright? But here's the thing, is what we got to talking about. They have a form of godliness but they deny the power. Well, how do they deny the power? Because they believe Jesus was a prophet, but they don't believe that Jesus resurrected from the dead. Therefore, they don't believe in the power. We believe in the power. Our king and our Lord is resurrected from the dead. He's, he's alive right now, sitting on the right hand of the Father, Amen. making intercession for us. That's the difference. Same thing with Judaism. They believe in the one true God, they don't believe in the resurrection. Same thing with Sadducees. They believed in the one true God, but they didn't believe in the resurrection. You know, we don't talk about the Sadducees anymore after Jesus, rest, after Jesus Christ raised from the dead. You ever notice that? <laughs> <laughs> kind, of, kind of wipe that group kind of clear, huh? 
There's a lot of them saw it, I'm sure. The Bible says that they saw men, men of old walking around the holy city and come out of the graves. I, you know, I thought about that. I thought, you ever thought about that? You ever thought about wrecking Moses? You reckon some of them? Reckon some of them patriarchs of old start just they just saw walking through the holy city. Wouldn't that be something? That's what the Bible says. That's not my word. That's what the Bible says. Amen. That's right. Ain't it? Wouldn't that be something? But we got to talking about that. And here's the thing: that's a that's a hot topic. And why is it a hot topic? Because everybody needs to understand Christ is alive. That's right. He's alive. That's right. Yeah. And because he's alive, you and I are set free from the law of sin and death. Thank you, Jesus. That right there in itself, he's worthy to be praised. Do y'all do y'all understand the meaning of the of the message in that? We need, we need to get into that state of worship. To that state of worship that we've never experienced, that we've never really been in. We need to press. Look at the times that's going on right now. We need to press. We need to get into that, that secret place with him. You know, I don't know where it's at, but it talks about he'll hide you in a secret pavilion. He'll hide you in that secret pavilion. You'll be hid under the shadow of the shade of the Almighty. Yes, Psalms 91. Psalms 91. Thank you, Sister mm -hmm. B. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's what he says. You know, I ain't never shared this. I'm going to share this. I got to praying about the Lord hiding me in the, in the shadow of the Almighty. And it specifically says in his pavilion. I said, Lord, hide me in your pavilion from the things of this world. And I had a dream one night. And I want to share this with y'all. Because I want I want I want y'all I want y'all to know what God does when you ask him to do something and you pursue him with everything and you truly follow him. He does it. Yes. And he ain't playing about mm -hmm. it. He does it. And when he hides you, he hides you in the spiritual realm mm. from all demonic forces, principalities, mm -hmm. and powers. Right. Amen. Yeah. That's it. And I had this dream this night, and it was me and my son. And I was in a bathroom. And he was standing on the outside of the door hollering, Daddy, Daddy. And I said, hold on a minute, Lawson. I said, I'll be out in just a second. I come outside the bathroom, and there's these people. And they start coming out of the woods. And they're going, Lawson, Lawson. And I'm looking at them, and I'm like, what is this about? I don't know these folks. you know. And I got him by the hand. And there's a woman, and she's leading the pack. And she's coming down this road and she's floating about five foot off the ground. And the Lord spoke to me and said, she's a witch. Mm -hmm. And there's demons up under both her arms and they're carrying her. And they're looking for your child. They're looking for Lawson. But they can't find him. Ooh, Ooh. Hallelujah. Because she's got it hid Thank you, yeah. Jesus. in the Ooh. pavilion. That's yeah. right. In that secret place. Yes. See that bathroom? Yes. The Lord showed me that bathroom. That's a secret place, brother. Yeah. That's a private place. Ooh. He had him in that private place Thank where they couldn't Lord. get to him. You foul witches, I bind every last one of you. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. They couldn't find him. And they couldn't find me either. And you know what? They was looking for him in the spirit. These principalities were looking for him and they couldn't find him. And they still can't find him. And they want none of them be able to get to him. Hallelujah. They won't because I got the authority. Let me tell you something. When I get in that prayer closet, brother, it's some straight up. Oh, thank you, Jesus. It's war. And I go to war in the spirit over through all that. Because I, he, they can't have my son. They can't have my family. And I pray my everlasting father and the prince of peace because of what he has done for me. And he hides us in those places like that. They can't have you either, Kinsley. Mm. You hid in that place too. Absolutely. And River. Every last one of y'all is. Amen. So that, amen, yes sir. It is powerful. And he showed me. He showed me. You know, like we talked about Sunday. The, see, Paul shows us a mystery. Just like we talked about. The mystery was, we're seated with him in the heavenlies. But when you're seated with him in the heavenlies, that's why he says what you bind on earth will be bound in the heavens. Yes. That's right. Yes, because you're there with him, and you can find it. And they can't, they can't do nothing. Spiritual law binds them. Just that in itself. When we go into that prayer closet, hey, if you don't praise him for nothing else, praise him because he hides you in them secret places yes. from all of our enemies. And our enemies are not, are not each other. Our enemies are demonic forces. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Amen. And they don't have no authority over uh -uh. us. 
Ooh, I ain't good. never told. I think I told Mother about that dream. I don't know, but I ain't never really told nobody that. But that was absolutely profound to me. That that pavilion. That's another thing. Everything in God's word, when He tells you He'll do something, that's a spiritual place that you can enter into. Yeah, it's real. Just because we can't see it, that doesn't mean anything. It's real. It's spirit. Mm -hmm. Let's go to John 11 and 41. John 11 and 41. But I got to say this for the camera. If you are a witch and you're watching this, Jesus loves you. He'll set you free from that familiar spirit that you're playing with. Amen. If you want true freedom, he'll set you free from it. Yes. John 11 and 41. I'm in Luke. I'm in the wrong, I'm in the wrong gospel. Luke 41. No, ma'am, you're in the right one. John 11 and 41. I was in Luke. John I was in the wrong okay. one. Here we go. John 11 and 41. Now listen to what Jesus says right here. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. This is when he come. This is when Lazarus was resurrected from the grave, from the dead. And they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. Y'all see that? Even Christ, when he was on this earth in a fleshly body, even he yes. lifted up his eyes and thanked the Father because he heard him. Mm -hmm. Remember what he told the disciples? Remember he, they, he told them, he said, this sickness is not in the death before the glory of God. Mm -hmm. Watch what he says in 42. And I knew that thou hearest me always. But because of the people which stand by, I said, I said it, that they might believe that thou hast sent me. Hey, there ain't nothing wrong when you talk to the Lord, talk to him publicly. There ain't nothing wrong with that. He said it, he said it in front of people so that they would believe. There ain't nothing wrong with that. Praise God in public. Watch, you'll, you'll get some reaction. That's okay. That's all right. But hey, that's just what we got to do. We got to be, the Bible says that we're a peculiar people. We're supposed to be set apart. That's right. Mark 1, Mark 1, 35. I told y'all we're going to go through the whole Bible. Right? Mark 1 and 35. One and thirty-five. Again, this is Jesus. He leads by example, right? He is our example. If we want to know anything about the Lord, we can always read about Jesus. He even says, he says, learn of me. He literally says to learn about me. That's what he tells us. Well, one and thirty-five. And in the morning, rising up a great, a great while before day, he went out and departed into a solitary place and there prayed. And he prayed. He went into a secret place. He went into a solitary place by himself and he prayed. Well, who was he praying to? Yeah, exactly. The Lord. Well, he showed what praying no you, you think about it. He wasn't praying to nobody else. He was praying to his father, which was on the throne. He was praying to Jehovah. That's who he was praying to. If Jesus got up early in the morning and prayed, you reckon we need to? Mm -hmm. and that's, just, that's for me, too. Yeah, Amen. That's for me. Because I have a hard time. Yeah, I'm going to be honest with y'all. It's, it's hard. You know, you wake up and it's like, oh, Lord, just, can, we, can we just wait another hour? Amen. Can we just wait one more hour? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Mark 6, 46. Because we're in Mark. Mark 6 and 46. Amen. Just a simple scripture. Amen. 
And when he had sent them away, talking about the disciples, this is before he walked on the sea, this is before he appeared to them on the sea, struggle 45, so it amazing. sense. And straightway he constrained his disciples to get into the ship and to go to the other side before unto Bethsaida. While he sent them away, while he sent away the people, and when he had sent them away, he departed into a mountain to pray. I thought that was funny right there where it says he departed to a mountain. He got high. <laughs> he got he got a little higher. Mm -hmm. That's what we do. When we go pray, when we get into that closet and we start to pray, we get high, y'all. You know, I don't know who some of us was talking about that the other day. I think it was Sister Victoria, I can't remember. That's why that's why that's why the world now tries to do every kind of drug. They they want to experience something. Yeah. And they can. And it's the call he's called the Holy Ghost. You can experience in him. That was the last scripture I had now. I bet y'all was thankful for that one. <laughs> yeah. I probably thought, Lord, he's going to give us about 10 more. No, but that's the last one I had for tonight. But that scripture struck me. He departed into a mountain to pray. Jesus prayed while he was here. He prayed to the Father. He thanked the Father openly in public. He thanked him. And if he leads by example, we need to follow that example. That's all I really have for tonight. Amen. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, know, Lord. Thank you, know, you know Moses went up to the mountain too. That's right. He did. He stayed up and went up high. <laughs> forty days. And then had to go right back up for another forty. Because he broke the broke the stones, broke the commandments. They had to go right back up there. You know that's something else it says that when he come down they couldn't even look at him. That's right. Hmm. He'd been in the presence. Been in the presence of God. He was he was shining. You think about climbing a mountain. Ooh. You think about how, how hard it is to get there. Amen. Hey, that's a revelation in itself. Yeah. That's some of the that's the the best prayer I ever prayed was that right there. Help. I don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. Help me. I give it to you. That's the best thing. You know. If, if people need to realize realize that there's deliverance. In the presence of God, when you just by yourself, sure, yeah. Yeah, that's right. there is. Yeah, there's devils that get cast out in public places. Absolutely, Jesus talks about it. It goes, it's, it goes on today. But look here, He'll deliver you in right closet. in your bedroom. Yeah, prayer closet. He's showing me right in your prayer closet. He delivered me. I ain't ashamed to say it. I thank God He delivered me. He renewed my mind because yeah, my mind was distorted. Very, very badly. Huh. And that's something else. When you start talking to Jesus, and when you start having a relationship with him every single day of your life, and you start talking to him, not only is he going to talk back, he's going to come in, and he's going to drive all that garbage out. Amen. That's why it says, don't be, don't be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Amen. And that's what he does. He renews our mind. Thank the Lord for that. Amen. Yes. Yep. Anybody else got a testimony? Anybody want to share something? You know, back when the disciples was in the upper room, it, before that time, after that, when the, Holy, when the Holy Ghost come and go, it says here, it says when the, when the, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, Amen. Which is here now, it's been here ever since, right? And by it said by when it had fully come, it, 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 I was wondering, well, it did come on Jesus, you know. It did. But what it was talking about is this was the they came on the feast of Pentecost, okay. and they held that feast every year for years after years after years after years, and. Uh, and, uh, you know, the Spirit of God would come on Samson to do miraculous things at times. Mm -hmm. But uh, it wasn't here fully. It was only here partially to do the work of God through people. But um, when the day of Pentecost would fully come, it lived in us. It lived yeah. in yeah. people. And it's here all the time. It's here all the time, yes. It's fully come. Yeah. But see, they, they had the Feast of Pentecost for many, many years where they 
celebrated Pentecost, but they received it from the day Before of Before it come? Right. Yeah, Brother Bobby, if you, if, you, if, if you ever go to John 20, on the same day of the resurrection, when Jesus resurrected from the grave, that evening, this is what he says. He said, and when he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, receive you the Holy Ghost. Now, we talked about this other night in prayer meeting. That's, he, they received life. That was life. But here's the thing. When you come to Jesus Christ, not only do you get salvation, but you get the spirit of the living God. Because now you're born of the water. Jesus is the living water. When you get born of the water, then you get the spirit of the living God. He had breathed on them, and he said, receive you the Holy Ghost. But the, com but the complete submerging in the baptism of the, into the spirit that fell on them had not took place until the day of Pentecost had fully come. Yes, sir. They had the spirit. But they had been submerged completely into the spirit. That's why it says cloven tongues of fire set on each of their heads. Not only did they, not only was they fully submerged in the spirit, but they also received a spiritual gift, which was diverse kinds of tongues, because every last one of them spoke in a different language. And we know that because they heard it. Everybody in the place heard it. It was all different languages, but they, but they could all, it was all the same message. And just like water baptism, when you're submerged in water and rise again, the baptism of the spirit you're submerged in the spirit and then you rise up with power Amen. because you shall receive power at the Holy Ghost come upon you Amen. so but everybody that that receives the baptism of the Holy Ghost if you got the Holy Ghost you're going to speak in tongues and I've had a lot of people argue with me on that but I tell you it's not scriptural if they don't speak in tongues mm -hmm. because it's a sign and the Lord was uh, very particular about that sign the Jews sought the sign. They wanted a sign for everything. Mm -hmm. And the Lord gave them a sign to the unbeliever that the believer was filled with the Holy Ghost. Acts chapter 2 verse 4. And they were filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And this is something that I didn't understand for years. Because I grew up in a Pentecostal church. But I never spoke in tongues. But I believed in Jesus. I believed in Him. And I had the Spirit of God. But I'm going to tell you. Here you go. You want you want the Holy Ghost. You want the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You gotta you better pursue Him with everything you got. Absolutely. Right. If you really want Him, you pursue Him with everything that you have, and I promise you, you'll get it. Yeah. Complete submersion. Yeah. I'm talking about the dove will come and light on you. Come on, brother. Amen. Amen. I'm telling you, that'll yeah. take place. Yeah. Ooh, I but it, I Amen. Hey, that's, that's, that's the that's truth. That's, yeah. that's what that's what that's what the, the spirit the spirit descended from the head, from heaven and abode upon Him in the form of a dove. That's the spirit. That's the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And stayed. And stayed. That's right. But you know, Brother Bobby, and even uh, in teaching in that on, te on teaching on that subject, if you keep reading here in the Book of Acts, it even talks about some of them was baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, but the, they had not yet received the Spirit. Yeah. So they sent disciples down there to lay hands on to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. And there's other accounts that says that some of them had not received water baptism, and they had received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Right. So here's the thing. The, the Bible clearly states, it says, repent for the remission of sins and be baptized, mm -hmm. and then receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Yeah. Can you be baptized in the Holy Ghost without being baptized in water? Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You sure can. Yes. Because the can. Bible clearly states that you yeah. can. Yes, yes you can. Can you be? Can you believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior, and not receive and not have the baptism of the Holy Ghost? Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. you sure can. Yeah. These two things are both true, and it's, it's up to us to seek Him with all our hearts, all our soul, and all our mind to receive that power from on high. They were, He breathed on them the day of the resurrection. He breathed on them, and said, "Receive you the Holy Ghost." But power hadn't took place yet. Uh, tongues ain't took place yet. Think about that. That was the day that he resurrected from the grave. He spent it was 40 days that he walked around on this earth after the resurrection and then he ascended and then he told them to go tarry 10 days. That was 50. That's Pentecost. When, the, when Pentecost was fully come, that's what Pentecost means. It's 50. 
So think about that. They received the Holy Ghost. He breathed on them. They received the Holy Ghost. And then 40 days went by. And then he ascended to heaven. Then he said, now go tarry 10 days. And then the day of Pentecost was fully come. And then they received the baptism. Then the Spirit fell on them. It was 50 days from Passover That's to right. Pentecost. 50 That's days. Right. That's right. That's right. When I first uh, come to him about two months, but uh, I wanted him. And before I got baptized the first time in water, uh, I got baptized in the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And that can happen because the Bible says that that has happened with some of them. Sure can. So that, you know, and I know that there's a, I'm just going to be honest with you, if, if anybody teaches that, they need to go back and read the Word because the Word says it's such different. You can be baptized in the Spirit and not receive water baptism. That's right. And you can't. And John you can't. the Baptist was baptizing in River Jordan before the death, yeah. burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ. There you go. He's putting them down and raising them up in there the name go. of Jesus. And, and he was on the earth. Yes. And he had he had died yet. Right. He hadn't went to the cross yet. That's right. I ain't trying to he prepared the way of the Lord. Right. I ain't trying to switch anything, but I was reading the other day and it just come to me for the first time. And it's about the baptism that the, mm -hmm. when Jesus was led into the wilderness. Yes, sir. The Spirit led him in the wilderness. And he was there 40 days. Then the tempter came to him, right? Yeah, the Bible says that after 40 days when he was hungry, when he was a hungry, that Satan came to him and tempted uh -huh. him That's what I in, the, in his weakest state. Yeah. yeah. And not only him, but it says, the, uh, if I ain't mistaken, it was all the beasts of the field as well. All the beasts, all the, every demonic that he could bring with him, he brought with him. Yeah. Everything. He had the son of the living God in a fleshly form on the earth. He'd been fasting for 40 days and 40 nights. He was in his weakest state, and he said, I'm going to go tempt him with everything I got. Yeah. yeah. He, he, yeah. yeah. And, of course, we know that the devil knows the word because he used the word, but what he did is he twisted the word. Right. And then Christ, see, 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 there you go. See, in spirit and in truth, you see. Mm -hmm. He knew the word. And he, he used the word on Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. That's a revelation in itself right there. He used the word on Jesus, but it wasn't the truth. Mm. It was the word, but he didn't use it correctly. That's you see, he used it to tempt him. Yeah. See, that wasn't truth. That wasn't in truth. And then Jesus hid him within the truth. <clears throat> and uh, you get deep enough in the spirit, you can see him. Mm -hmm. And I ain't going to lie to you, I didn't see what was on her but the Bible says that the eyes are the window to the soul. Right. You can see in her eyes there was a demonic entity there. Oh, yeah. And I got real close to her and I asked her if she knew who Jesus was. And this is what she told me. She said, I am baby Jesus and I loved you before before you ever loved me. See? That's what I'm and I looked at her and I said, I bind every devil in your life right now. <laughs> yeah. and, she, and, and she went, your breast stinks. And she turned her head. <laughs> Where she told me that, that thing talked back to me. You remember that day? Me and him with it. That, that, oh, yeah, was, in, that, that was in Troy Edge Regional. Well, that, that's how they are. That's how they operate like that. Yeah. They could be talking about that. Then I said, just get rude. I mean, hey, but that goes to show you right there. But here, here's the thing it's true, though. They'll come at you with stuff yeah. like that. Oh, yes, they will. And, he, and, he, and, it, and here's the sad thing about it. Here's the sad thing about it. Honestly, this is really sad. The doctors and the nurses are completely blind to it. Oh, yeah, they call it they psychosis. They don't have a clue. When they hear them talk like that, they just put it as psychosis. Yeah, that's, that's what they that's do. That's the, you know. Not the, all of them, Kevin. Not all of them. I have a lot of nurse friends that are, you know, you can't can't do it there, right, but right, they man, come back after. Of they come, of some of us in healthcare, we know. Amen. Right? Amen. We I, know. I, and I'm we glad know. that there's ones like that in healthcare. There's counselors like that too. Amen. We need we need more of those because I'm gonna yes. tell you them, them devils that attack you, the, the devils that attack the mind. Yeah. That's that's you know it's like when you know Jesus the one that was vexed with that devil he said this kind comes forth by nothing other than fasting and prayer. Yes, you better be in a place when you go calling the more new things out. Yeah, oh, you better. there's only one pill that'll get rid of the devil. Gospel. That's the gospel. The gospel. That's right. <laughs> I love it. That's, that's right. <laughs> that's right. He can't do nothing with the word, y'all. Nope. He can't do nothing. He may mock it. 
No, he does that now. Throw it, but he can't do nothing with the word because he's not true. Jesus said, I beheld Satan as light and fall from heaven. Amen. He's a liar and the father of all lies, yeah. and the truth is not in him. Amen. And so whatever comes out of his mouth is a lie. It's a lie. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So if you want to know the truth, you serve the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. But if you want to follow a lie, you serve the devil. Amen. And schizophrenia is nothing but a demon. But of course, it is. a lot of it, a lot of it is war warfare. Yeah. Of course, it is. And the pharmaceutical companies they use sorcery. Yeah. If you didn't know, if you didn't know that, and you're watching this, that's sorcery. That's called mind altering drugs, and that's sorcery. The Greek word is pharmakia. Yes, there we go. It is, and it means sorcery. Yes. Yeah. It talks about it. Revelation 18. Yes, sir. But you tell you tell people that in this day and time, and they look at you like you got three heads, like you don't went crazy. Yeah. Yeah. There's a reason the medical profession's got a snake on a pole. Amen. <laughs> yeah, that's a symbol. Yeah. Mm. Well, that's all I have tonight. Did y'all have anything?